many things for granted. Amongst these is the fact that everything around us has mass and weight. Hi, I'm Gege. Welcome to the second lesson in the series on gravity and mechanical energy. In our previous lesson, we observed how things fall down. We showed that objects of different mass take the same time to fall. We also showed that objects of different size and shape take different times to fall in air due to air resistance. But in a vacuum, these same objects will take the same time to fall. By investigating how the motion of an object changes while it is falling, we found that objects fall with uniform acceleration. Finally, we explained that things fall due to the gravitational force of attraction between an object and the Earth or an object and the Moon. In this lesson, we are going to explore more relationships between the mass of objects, the acceleration due to gravity, and the gravitational force of attraction between objects. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the differences between the mass and the gravitational force of attraction of an object. Use a simple formula to calculate the magnitude of an object's gravitational force of attraction. To begin our lesson, let's revisit the idea of a gravitational field that Sir Isaac Newton introduced. Newton was a very keen astronomer and wanted to explain why planets follow fixed orbits around the Sun. He also wondered why the Moon remained orbiting the Earth. Legend tells us that this moment of inspiration came when he noticed an apple falling downwards. To explain all these things, he introduced his idea of a gravitational force field. He showed that there is a gravitational force of attraction between all objects that have mass in the universe. Newton showed that the further the distance between the centers of objects, the weaker the gravitational force of attraction. And the larger the mass of both the objects, the stronger the gravitational force. In our solar system, the Sun is the most massive object. The Earth has a large mass too, but is a lot smaller than the Sun. Even though there is a large distance between the Earth and the Sun, there is still a large gravitational force between these two objects. It is this force, due to gravity, that keeps us in a fixed orbit around the Sun. There is also a force of attraction between the Earth and the Moon. Even though the Moon has much less mass than the Sun, the Moon is much closer to Earth and the gravitational force is therefore stronger. We notice the effect of this gravitational force when we study the changing tides of the oceans. Now, Newton's idea about the force due to gravity do not only apply to large objects like the Sun, the Earth and the Moon, but on any object in the universe that has mass. So, when an object with a small mass like a ball is released from a position above the Earth's surface, there is a small force of attraction between the ball and the Earth. This gravitational force causes the ball to accelerate downwards towards the center of the Earth. We call the gravitational force acting on the ball the weight of the ball. Weight is the force due to gravity acting on a body. Do you notice that weight is acting in a particular direction? This means that weight is a vector. Remember, all vectors have both magnitude and direction. Now, in this lesson, we want to see how this gravitational force of attraction, weight, is related to mass and to the gravitational acceleration. Let's start by looking at the relationship between gravitational acceleration and weight. Remember, objects accelerate uniformly towards the Earth with an acceleration of 9,81 meters per second squared downwards. We represent this with the symbol G and we will approximate this value as 10 meters per second squared downwards. A juggler knows that he can catch the balls at specified times because they accelerate downwards at this fixed rate of 10 meters per second squared on Earth. Will the balls return at the same rate if he juggles on the moon? Remember, the magnitude of the gravitational acceleration on the Earth is about 1,6 meters per second squared. Because of this, the balls will take six times as long to rise to their maximum height and fall down again. 
It's only when we consider leaving Earth and exploring space that we become aware of the magnitude of gravitational acceleration because this will affect the weight of objects. If you know that the acceleration due to gravity is only 1,6 meters per second squared downwards on the Moon, what does this tell you about the weight of an object on the Moon? Remember Newton's law of universal gravitation states that the gravitational force of attraction is dependent on the mass of both objects. The Moon has a much smaller mass than the Earth. So, on the Moon, there will still be a force due to gravity acting on any object. But this force will be smaller on the Moon than it is on Earth. Can you see that there must be a relationship between the weight of an object and the gravitational acceleration? When the gravitational acceleration is large, like on Earth, the force due to gravity is large. But on the Moon, where the gravitational acceleration is smaller, the force due to gravity is also smaller. So the weight of objects is smaller too. Let's go see what Aaron is up to in the lab. Hey guys, what do you think is going to be easier to lift this 2.5 kilograms bag of sugar? On Earth or on the Moon? In fact, the weight on the Moon is directly related to the gravitational acceleration on the Moon. And since the gravitational acceleration on the Moon is one-sixth of the gravitational acceleration on Earth, the weight of any object will also be one-sixth less on the Moon than on Earth. Now that we've seen that there is a relationship between weight and gravitational acceleration, let's look at the relationship between weight and mass. Now I know these two words are often used to mean the same thing, but in physics, they actually have very different meanings. For example, the sample of sugar here weighs 0 0.25 kilograms. But are we recording the weight of the sugar or the mass? Weight is the force due to gravity and force is measured in newtons, not in kilograms. So when we say the mass of sugar is 0 0.25 kilograms, we're actually talking about the mass, not its weight. Like we do in everyday life, the mass, we measure it in kilograms. And the weight, is measured in Newton. That's in physics. Now I'm going to show you how the mass actually relates to quantity in it. I'm going to measure 0 0.5 kilograms of sugar in there to see the difference, to see which one has got more granules. Let's have it over here. It's back to zero there. I'm going to pour in 0 0.5 kilograms. There we go. Now take a close look at this two. You can clearly see that this one here, 0 0.25 kilograms, there's less granules, and 0 0.5 kilograms, there is more granules of sugar in it. Back to your studio, KK. Thanks, Aaron. Now that we recognize that the terms mass and weight are different, let's think about how they relate to each other. Have a look at these two packets of sugar. This one has a mass of 0, 0,5 kilograms, while the second one has a mass of 2,5 kilograms. If I hold the first packet of sugar out in front of me, I can feel the gravitational force of the Earth pulling this sugar downwards. What would happen to the force pulling downwards if I picked up the second packet instead? You could try the same activity using any objects that have different masses. Compare what you feel when you hold both objects in front of you. Clearly, the object with a greater mass has a stronger force pulling it downwards. This force is, in fact, the weight of the sugar. So, the weight of an object is directly related to its mass. The greater the mass, the greater the weight. So far, we have found that the weight and acceleration due to gravity are related. The greater the acceleration due to gravity, the greater the weight of an object. In fact, weight and acceleration due to gravity are directly proportional. We also know that weight and mass are related. These two are also directly proportional. In physics, we can represent this relationship in one equation. 
Weight is equal to m, the mass of the object, multiplied by g, the magnitude of gravitational acceleration. We know that on the surface of the Earth, the magnitude of g, acceleration due to gravity, is taken as 10 meters per second squared. So, the weight of an object on Earth is equal to the mass of the object in kilograms. Weight multiplied by 10 meters per second squared. Let us calculate the weight of this packet of sugar. It has a mass of 0 0,5 kilograms. Therefore, its weight on Earth is equal to 0 0,5 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared, which gives us weight of 5 Newton. Is this answer complete? Remember that weight is a force. The SI unit is Newton and weight is a vector quantity. So a more complete answer for the weight of a mass of 0 0,5 kilograms is 5 Newton downwards. Now, because weight and mass are two entirely different quantities in physics, we use different instruments to measure mass and weight. We measure mass using a triple beam balance. An object is placed on the scale pan and masses are added until the pointer rests in equilibrium. We record the mass of an object in grams or kilograms. When we want to find the weight of an object, we use a spring balance. The weight is suspended on a hook on the spring balance and its weight is measured in Newton. The gravitational force is pulling the object downwards. This downward force causes the spring to stretch and moves the measuring indicator so that you can read off a measurement of the force on the scale. The scales we use every day, like kitchen scales or bathroom scales, make use of the fact that mass and weight are related. When you stand on a bathroom scale, your weight pushes downward. Your weight pushes down on a lever that turns a needle to point to a reading. The scale uses the relationship between weight and mass to convert the force applied into a mass reading in kilograms. So, kitchen and bathroom scales are actually finding weight, but it is then converted into mass. But will a scale that is designed for Earth work on the moon? Think about this carefully. Which of these two instruments, the triple beam balance or the scale, will have the same reading for an apple on Earth as it does on the moon? If you have come to the correct solution, then you already know a lot about the differences between mass and weight. Here is the answer. The triple beam balance measures the mass of the apple. Mass is the amount of matter contained in an apple. The amount of matter in the object doesn't change when you take it to the moon, but its weight does change. Weight is a force due to gravity. It acts on objects pulling them down towards the center of the planet. On Earth, an apple weighs six times more than it does on the moon because the magnitude of gravitational acceleration on Earth is six times more than it is on the moon. Astronauts don't have less apple to eat on the moon. It just weighs less. The reading on the spring balance changes when you measure the weight of the apple on Earth and on the Moon. As you can see, it is very important to come to a good understanding of mass and weight. Now, here's your task for today. An astronaut uses a special Moon scale to find the weight of some rocks. He finds that they have a weight of 480 Newton downwards. Find the mass of these Moon rocks and also their weight on Earth. Here is some useful data to help you complete the task.
In the next lesson of this series, we'll find out about work done when a force acts on an object and on how gravitational potential energy is transferred to an object when its height above the Earth's surface increases. Goodbye. Yeah.